my sweet friends, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. I have got a sweet little project to share today that is super easy and fast to make. It's practical as well. So I think you are all really going to enjoy it. So this is kind of a version of a project that we have made not too long ago. I shared a traveler's notebook style lister. And so that had a sturdy cover with inserts. And I got to thinking to myself that maybe the peeps would want to make this without having to mess around with the elastic and punching holes. So I just got another option and this one has pockets to tuck the inserts into. So it's much easier to make and it still has all that great practical function to it. So if that sounds good to you, then stick around and we'll make it together. So I'm just gonna be using papers from my stash as well as the vintage sewing printable from my shop. And I really love these vintagey images with that bluey green color and I'm never really sure exactly what to call that so you can let me know in the comments what you would consider that bluey green to be and so let's get started with our cover obviously we want this to be very sturdy so I'm starting out with 110 pound cardstock I have it cut to be six inches high by nine and a half inches wide it's scored at four and a half and also five. So we're gonna get a good amount of depth there in our spine. And I also want to add some additional layers for the front and back cover for extra sturdiness and also to give it a nice finished edge. So we have two pieces of 65 pound weight cardstock. And this time it's going to be six high by nine wide and scored at four and a half. And of course I wanna use my two glue combo, especially on the cover to make sure that it is well and truly secured. So I'll just go ahead and remove the tape backing from one side and then add my secondary glue and I'll bring this to the crease right in that score line to make sure that everything is nice and even across the top and the bottom and in the spine. Now is when you wanna take the backing from the remainder of this tape. And that is just making it a lot easier to manage without getting stuck to someplace you don't want it to be. So let's go ahead and just repeat that process. For this side, make sure you have your two glues. And just fold that over and give it a good press so it gets a good contact. Now you can see that we have a nice finished edge here and it is much thicker this way as well. So go ahead and do that same process for this side. In the original design, this is where we would have stopped to punch our holes and then run our elastic. But since we're just putting pockets in this time, we can move on to the next step. And so I have my beautiful pattern paper here and cardstock as well. The cardstock layer is going to be five and seven eighths by four and three eighths. And the pattern paper is five and three quarter by four and a quarter. And I think this matches that printable beautifully. So now I wanna create that pocket and I've just got a smaller piece of that pattern paper. It measures seven by three and I'm just gonna flip that over so I can put my first score line in at two and a half. You can see the back of this paper was some journal cutter parts, but the front coordinated perfectly, so we're gonna go with that. Now I just want to line that up to this top of the scoreboard, along with my page, position this so that you have a full score line on one side, and then shift that over all the pieces together till there's another full score line on this side. Now we want to take off those corners and cutting straight through to where our score lines intersected. And this will help to reduce the bulk behind that pocket. I'll fold that bottom portion up along the score line and just go ahead and pre-fold those side scores as well. I've got a little bit of my double-sided tape here and I'll just pull that backing off where 
the pocket needs to be adhered. So I'm just folding that bottom section up, making sure the sides will fold properly as well. Then I'll just go ahead and adhere those pieces. And you can see taking off that corner really does help to reduce the bulk quite a lot. Now we want to add some additional double-sided tape here and then also our two glue combo. I'm going to add these pages with the pocket portion facing inward and that will work to keep our inserts from falling out and so I'm just going to go ahead and add this with a nice border of the base as well as that beautiful gray cardstock. And then one for this side. Okay, now it's time to work on our inserts. I'm just going to use a regular old printer paper for this. And I'm starting with an eight and a half by 11 sheet. I cut it down to be five and a half inches wide. And we'll use the full depth initially. And we will go ahead and trim that when we get it folded. So I'm going to stack all those papers up and bring the corners together. They won't be exactly even because of the bulk of the layers, but now what you want to do is bring in a good sturdy guillotine cutter and we're going to chop that off so that it will be four exactly and have a nice clean finish and have a nice clean cut edge. Just going to do this portion with my guillotine cutter, line up that edge and then cut through those layers so you can see we've got that to be exactly four inches. So my plan to bind these pages together is to use my stapler. Now when I made the ones for the book today I did use my long arm stapler but when I was working I thought to myself you should maybe check to see if it will work with a regular standard size stapler and it did work perfectly so if you're making your pages four inches wide you don't need to go out of your way to get a long arm stapler or alternately you could punch this with an awl and then stitch it together with some string and so there's just a couple of different options for you on that and I did want to take a second to share a not exactly crafty tool but one that has found its way into my craft room, and especially for this project, I did find it to be a little bit difficult to see the line exactly where I was stapling it because the shadow from the stapler would fall on that book. And so I brought in this little, this little clippy light, and originally I have purchased this to use with my Kindle. I did have an older version and did not have a backlight, so this would clip on to my Kindle, and then I could turn this light on with varying stages of brightness and I could just clip this onto my shirt and aim that so when the stapler was hiding the light coming from above I could see very well with this little light. Now um, the army son and his wife got me a new Kindle with a backlight for Christmas and so I can repurpose this and I think of a lot of different ways to use this in my craft room so definitely gonna hang on to this. I will link it in the description. I picked it up from Amazon and I think it was pretty reasonable and it is a rechargeable one so you don't need to worry about putting batteries in it but I just thought I would share that in this moment because it really was helpful for this project. Here is the insert for my book and I've already added the staples. As you can see, I don't have any of the pattern paper around the cover yet and I'll tell you why when we get to that point, but I did start by adding my double-sided tape here and then I cut a companion paper for this project to be five and a half inches high. Now what I want to do is add this to one corner only and then make sure it is straight and even going across. This is easy to line up. And 
to fold over this paper before I take the backing off my tape, just so that I'm pre-folding that and it will line up correctly. Now you want to remove the remainder of the paper, the tape backing. Want to make sure that you fold that first instead of trying to lay it flat so that there will be enough room for the page to open properly. And then just fold that over right along, keeping it nice and even and level. Then just simply remove the excess. So this is a great place to find some layering patterns because they already go together. So you know that they will work well for other places in the book. So now that I have the excess cut off, I'll share with you why I did it in this fashion. And that is because I wanted to cover those staples because our inserts will be showing and not added to the spine. I wanted this to have a nicer finished edge. And so that way it's all covered, the staples with our collection paper. Now I've got my two inserts, obviously because we have two pockets, and I'm going to add them to the book before I put my layering on because I wanna make sure that I have everything going in the right direction. So the side here will tuck into <clears throat> the pocket this way so it would probably look like the back if it were pulled out but I want to be able to see these layers whenever I open my book so I'm just going to do it this way now you can see I'll put my layering patterns here and it will both show so I just die cut some little doilies here with some white cardstock and then I cut a couple of the images out from that printable and of course I add stickles and I'm not even going to bother showing you because it doesn't show up on camera very well but in real life it does add a great amount of detail so let's just go ahead and add these layers I think if you wanted to use this as a memory keeping book instead of just a list holder you could definitely do that there's going to be a little bit of room in here you see for some additional layers to be added so i would consider making my inserts with just three pages so that you can make up the difference of the bulk with your pattern paper and your photos but i think it would be a beautiful little memory keeping album so i'm just going to finish these with this uh, doily first and I push these to the end so I can get them pretty even going across and then I'll add my images. I know most of us in least part of the time keep our lists on our phone or on our computer and I do that as well for like groceries and that type of thing so I can have it with me but there's just something about a pen to paper when you're writing out a list and I think that probably will always be that way it's just something about writing things out and this will be a great way to store and organize those lists and it looks really pretty and it's very practical and sturdy so now we've got our inserts in you can see like I said there's a little bit of room and if you want to make this a scrapbook you would just have a few uh, less pages for the inserts so that you could make up that bulk with your layering now of course you want to finish the outside so just go ahead and fold that open so of course we have these pages are the same size as the ones on the inside and so that makes them much faster and easier to put together. So I do want to add a little bit of trim here. Now you definitely don't have to because of those pockets. It will hold those inserts inside very securely. However, I just really love this ribbon and I do get comments from folks sometimes and they say, well, why didn't you put it behind the paper on the back and that's just simply because I love it. I love the texture. I love the color. I love everything about the ribbon and so this is a place where I can have it showing and enjoy all of those features of it um, and just have it attached underneath the front and so that is the reason why I do that and you could do it either way just however it makes you happy and makes sense to you. So I did want to just secure that temporarily with a little bit of hot glue and I'll add my front cover as well. Just gonna get that nice border from the cover as well as the gray cardstock. 
And this ribbon trim came from a really reasonable ribbon, an absolutely beautiful taffeta ribbon. Now, remember I mentioned that I was going to get some layering pattern from the offcut on the insert cover. And so I just cut that to the width there. I can take advantage of the cardstock that's already there. And so I think that just adds a little bit of extra detail. And I want to top that with a pretty white doily. Got my image here from the printable. I did add that to a sturdy cardstock and added some foam tabs so that I could add some depth and dimension. I did, of course, add some stickles. And I'll just add that right to the center. I have prepared some flowers from scraps from my stash in, so I just kind of went with a coordinating color for this background. I put some die cut foliage here, netting loopy twine bows, and then of course more of that beautiful taffeta ribbon. And so this is just going to be adhered so that it anchors this bottom corner. And I do want to add that with hot glue because it's kind of heavy, just to make sure to keep all of those layers inside the cover. Now I did have a couple of sweet little sewing machine charms and I think those go really well. So of course I want to put these up in the corner and I'll add those with hot glue. I'll top those cut strings with a button. Last but not least, I do want to include these beautiful sequins and I'm going to have three. There's two on the base and then one on the image that is raised up. So I'm just going to adhere these with a little bit of my Tombow. So just to finish that off, I went ahead and I tied that bow and then I clipped off the excess ribbon at an angle so it wouldn't fray. If you want to see a version of this Easy Traveler notebook cover used as a scrapbook, let me know and because I really think this would be a very fast and easy way to fill a cover with inserts and have them for memory keeping. So that is going to be all. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe and check in the description for links to the products I mentioned as well as our socials. And always I'm wishing you a happy and productive day and I thank you so much for watching. Bye!